Hi and welcome to this video log with me Wayne from SwimmingCyclingRunning.com Well, I've had a lot of interest in my video about this little thing, the stride power meter. And there's been a few questions and people don't necessarily understand what power is and why it can be such a good tool for you to use. In this video I'm going to try and debunk that, take the mystery out of power meters by showing you exactly what you can judge take into account and what you can predict in the future. But not only that, wait to the end because I'm going to give you a tool by which you can actually see what power you would need to run specific distances at particular speeds. If you're finding this useful, it really helps us if you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you know when we're uploading videos. Also, if you do like it, hit that like button. Again, it really helps the channel. Thanks very much. Okay, I really do have to give a massive shout out to, for two books on power um, that I found incredibly useful. Jim Vance's book that you've already seen in my other video is here. Uh, and the second one is on the physics of running, the secret of running, um, which is by Van Dyck and Van Meegan, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. If I'm not, I'm very sorry. But this is a very useful book on the physics of running and how to calculate various things. Now your body uses energy to do anything and the power you use is just using up that energy. So when we want to understand power we really have to understand energy and how it reacts and what we can calculate from it. So we're just going to go to the computer and have a look at that energy usage and see what we can learn from it. When we run it requires energy and the energy E required to run distance D can be calculated using the formula E, the energy, equals the energy cost of running, generally 0.98, which we'll call C, multiplied by your weight or mass in kilograms, we'll call M, multiplied by the distance in kilometres, we'll call D. So the energy required for me to run the marathon would be 0.98, the energy cost of running that we've just said, multiplied by 73, my current weight in kilograms, multiplied by 42.2, which is the distance of a marathon, and that equals 3,019 kilojoules. Now when we run, we generally run from A to B and want to know that time. And once we know the energy requirement, E, the time taken to run that distance, T, is simply T is equal to E, the energy requirement, divided by P, the average power that I can keep up, or you can keep up, for that distance. So if I can hold 210 watts average for the marathon, my time will be 3019 kilojoules, divided by 210, my average power output, which equals 14,376 seconds, or 3 hours, 59 minutes, and 36 seconds. So we've just calculated that at 210 watts, that's my average power to beat a four hour marathon. Now, I don't know about you, but when I saw that I could run a marathon under four hours, if I produced 210 watts on average, I was actually blown away. It was a wow moment for me. Wow. I actually know that particular fact. And it's not questionable. It's not like heart rate, which is quite variable. Watts are exact. If I can hold that number of watts for that amount of time, I will actually do that performance. That to me is absolutely phenomenal. But what I really need to know is what I do with that information. So let's go to the computer and have another look at what 210 watts means for me. So knowing the power I need to run a specific time is absolutely amazing. But what I really need to know is at 210 watts, is that easy for me? Is it a moderate effort or am I actually redlining it? Now to help with this, we've developed the concept of functional threshold power, FTP. But for Tim Vance, that's run functional threshold power, and for Stride, that's critical power. But all of these mean one thing, and that is the maximum power you can hold for one hour. So if you want to graph that relationship with power and time, for short periods of time, 
we can actually hold massive amounts of power, but that drops off really quickly and levels out. But for 60 minutes, we're classifying that as our functional threshold power. And for periods less than that 60 minutes, we can hold higher power than our FTP. For periods longer, we can hold lower power than our FTP. And that's a hugely useful relationship because we can use that to calculate lots of other things. So the question we have to ask is, is 210 down here where I can run for a really long time or up here where I can only run for a short time? So we now understand about functional threshold power and what that means and the relationship that has to one hour racing. But how can we use that to predict things? To do that, we've got to have a better understanding of power itself. What makes up the power I use when I'm running, or for that matter, cycling. But the, in this particular video, we, we're really interested in running. So let's go to the computer and have a look at that power relationship. And although this is a little bit mathematical, hopefully we've broken it down so you'll be able to understand it very easily. So we want a model for running. And the overall power we need to run is the sum of three different powers. PR, the power needed to run forwards, plus PA, the power needed to overcome air resistance and wind, plus PC, the power we need to climb hills and inclines. Now, just to be thorough, the model that we're using is for PR equals C at the energy cost of running, which is 0 0.98, multiplied by our mass, our weight in kilograms, multiplied by our velocity in meters per second. Now the, the air resistance and wind resistance we're calculating as 0 0.5 times the air density, multiplied by CDA, which is the air resistance, multiplied by our velocity plus the wind velocity squared, multiplied by velocity again. So if there's no wind, it's just velocity cubed. Now, PC, our ability to climb, is calculated by the gradient in I percent, multiplied by our mass, which is our weight in kilograms, multiplied by gravity, multiplied by our velocity in meters per second. So now we can calculate our overall power because we know how to calculate running forwards, running through air and running through a hill. But when we do our examples, we're going to assume you're on a treadmill, which means we can do away with the air resistance and climbing. So our model becomes just the cost of running times your mass times velocity. However, we will show the cost of running through air in windless conditions so that you can see what the additional power requirement might be simply running at a particular speed through air. And that would be very useful because you have to add that to your requirements to run at a particular speed. So now we know to how, to how to calculate the energy requirement for any particular race. We also know that we can use functional threshold power to see what sort of percentage of that power we're using in a particular race. And we can actually calculate the power figures themselves. So we've got all those things that we can use. We actually can develop a model whereby we can calculate our power requirement for any specific distance from about 10 minutes upwards. Below 10 minutes, we're actually using the anaerobic uh, and ATP parts of our running system too much to actually be accurate. Um, it still will give you some idea, but it won't be completely accurate above 10 minutes it actually becomes a pretty good tool to use to actually predict what power you need to run a particular distance in a particular time. So we're going to go to the computer and have a look at that. And this is the tool that I'm giving you free online that you can afterwards just go, have a look, play with, and see yourself what you might be able to do. So let's go to the computer. Now here's a spreadsheet that you're all going to be able to use on my website. In fact, you're going to be able to use too. And you can see that I've highlighted four hours here, which is 240 minutes. Now I'm displaying on this spreadsheet functional threshold power, the power needed to run forward and the power needed to overcome air resistance, the distance in kilometers, the speed, and the watts per kilogram. So if we look down this, uh, at four hours, I have to run at 90.8% of my functional threshold power. I have to add together my 
need to run forward, my power to run forward is 206 plus 3.7, which is my power to overcome the air resistance at that speed. So that's 210, which is what we originally said. At that power level, I will actually run 42.3 kilometers. Remember, I'm just going to beat the four hour mark. And that is at 10.6 kilometers an hour or 2.8 watts per kilogram. Now, that's what I do at four hours. But obviously, at one hour, I would see my functional threshold power. And my functional threshold power has to be 227, which is what is put up here. I'm 73 kilograms, and I, my, I'm assuming that I need a functional threshold power to beat four hours of 227 watts normally. And that in itself creates 4.9 watts of additional air resistance. And at that, I'd be able to run an hour at 11.6 kilometers an hour. Now, interestingly, my actual current functional threshold power is 210. So if we go to the four hour mark again, and we look where 42.2 comes, we can see that it's in between 42 and four, uh, sorry, 260 and 261 minutes. Now that means I've actually lost 20 minutes at my current functional threshold power. So improving my threshold power by 17, functional threshold power at 70, by 17, is going to save me over 20 minutes on a marathon. And that's something that's really interesting to me. Also, I can actually play with my weight. Now, as you run more, you're liable to lose weight. So if I manage to reduce my weight, let's say to 70 kilograms, what happens at 210. Well, I can cover 43.9 in 260 minutes and I will complete the marathon in under 250 minutes. Now that means just by losing three kilograms, I've actually saved myself over 10 minutes on a marathon distance. And interestingly, if I put in 220 as the functional th threshold power now, I actually complete the marathon even easier. So let's put in a 218 and you can see that now I'm back to my four hour marathon schedule or beating four hour marathon schedule and I'm at 70 kilograms and I only have to actually raise my functional threshold power to 218. That's only eight watts increase in my functional threshold power. Now we can look at shorter distances and times. And if we look at the two hour mark, I'm very close to covering my half marathon time at my existing FTP. In fact, I'm in between 120 and 125 minutes, um, probably closer to 124 than I am to 120. So thereabouts, if I look at my 10k time, I'm going to be doing it in just over 55 minutes, probably 55, 30, 56 minutes. And my 5k time is going to be over 25, but well under 30 minutes. I've also got uh, for you, completely free, and it's on the same page, um, the, these tables split by one minute intervals. And if we look at the half marathon time now, I need 21.1. I'm going to do it in literally 123.30, one would suggest. My 10k time is just under 56 minutes, or in between 55 and 56, so probably 55.30. And my 5k time, under 27 minutes, but above 26 minutes, so about 26.30. So this is really useful information. But what happens if I change one of these parameters? Let's say I go on my diet and I get down to 70 kilograms. Well, I've suddenly reduced from 26.30 to 25 minutes for my 5k kilometers and that's at my existing FTP. 10 kilometers I've gone down to 53 minutes again at my existing FTP and for the half marathon I'm at now beating two hours. So it shows you how powerful this is in predicting what I can do given various parameters changing my FTP and working towards that or even working towards losing weight. Now, the running maths used by Stride and other people who create programs for power meters is slightly more complex than the one I've shown you, but the one I've shown you will still give you a reasonably accurate indication of the power levels you need to run at that particular pace for that particular distance. 
The Stride software now calculates your functional threshold power after you've done a few runs, and that they say is pretty accurate. So instead of doing a functional threshold power test, you could probably rely on the stride analysis, the artificial intelligence, to give you an accurate figure of your FTP and work on that one. So it actually takes out the need to do an FTP test regularly in your runs. Now my power meter from stride is actually an old one. It's over a year and a half old. But the new ones actually give you a power reading for wind as you're running into or with the wind. So that actually is a hugely important thing. As you saw, saw in the um, spreadsheet, we give air resistance, but that doesn't even include wind resistance. That's added to the power needed to run at a particular speed. So you, needing to keep your power at a particular level, having wind resistance there, is hugely important because you can actually see and actually judge in real time how wind is affecting you on your run. All right, so below this is a link to those two books I showed you earlier, Run With Power and The Secret of Running. So if you want to learn more about power and running, those are the two books I'd really heartily recommend. I am doing a video trying to see if you're wasting money on shoes. If we pay more for shoes, does that repay us with a lower power requirement to run a particular speed. So I'm looking at that and hopefully we'll have that out shortly. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks very much for watching. See you next week.